So coming on to the work that, that we did with the um, City of Edinburgh Council, uh, we were already at that point of, of working along with these place and wellbeing outcomes and looking at the value of them when Edinburgh approached us looking at the, the two scenarios that they were considering for their local development plan. One was that traditional approach, um, come on to a description of it in a minute, and the other um, you could easily coined, though I don't think initially they, they had done, as a 20-minute neighbourhood approach. Honestly, though, I think the whole reason that we're all now calling it a 20-minute neighbourhood approach is because that's what it says in the programme for government. So if that's the terminology that everyone else has picked up and is using across many other um, sectors and professional bodies, then I'm happy to use that if it's the recognisable thing. So they were looking at the, the impacts of each scenario on the well-being of people and planet and, um, and we, we sat and did some work with them mapping that and coming up with some summaries and recommendations as a result of that. The traditional scenario, um, and this is when we get down into the nitty gritty of, of planning policy and um, master plans and development frameworks and the need to um, perhaps get a little bit more specific as many development plans do across Scotland about what it is that we actually want when we're looking at change in an area, was moving from that scenario of low density, semi-detached or detached with large gardens, a limit of mixed uses in an area and as a result of all of that a lower critical mass to create the market for services. We can't simply ask um, developers to build uh, the ability to have shops and amenities if we don't build to a certain amount of density that allows people to walk and get there otherwise they'll get in their car and go beyond the, the local um, shop that we've, we've provided for in a development, it will be too road and car orientated. It's the simple math of if everything is spaced out, semi-detached, large gardens and low density, it takes us so long to walk to something that we prefer to get in the car. So the 20 minute neighbourhood is at a higher density and 65 per hectare is not that high. You know, places like Gorgair are at 300 per hectare. It isn't high density that we're, uh, we're aware of not being great, high air density. There is a mix of uses, but that can be encouraged by the fact that you're building to a higher density. There's an emphasis on brownfield in the Edinburgh Local Development Plan, but an acceptance that this completely applies also to any greenfield development also. The importance is getting that critical mass to support services, whether that be brownfield in the suburbs or out on a greenfield site, and an overall desire to reduce car usage in order to get to services and amenities. So what we did was we, we took the, the scenario, the two scenarios, and, and we spent some time running them through against how did each one meet with um, delivering on our Scotland's national outcomes and how did they also deliver upon those place and well-being outcomes as well that sit behind the place standard. But an important aspect of that as well was you can't simply do that. You need to think about those different populations back to that initial image with the people and the differences where we have people that are wheeling, people pushing prams, a, a growing um, elderly population. When we're thinking about all of the aspects that make up a place, we also need to do an assessment around um, all of those different population groups. So that's that sounds time consuming. Um, I have to say that took two afternoons to do that and the results of it meant that that for Edinburgh they now have this report that has very clear set of um, findings that yes a 20 minute neighbourhood is a, a far healthier approach never mind its, its contributions to reducing carbon emissions it does it, um, address head on those inequalities in health and well-being as well but there were some extra aspects that, that we drew out around there's a real need to get a density sweet spot we're not looking to go back to the densities that we used to build to there's a need to get the infrastructure in first because we're looking at behavior change here and if if you want to have something like active travel and people walking um, instead of getting into the car then we need to be getting that in right up front um, and be thinking about it the mix of the type and size of housing 
was crucial because if if we're looking back to the the initial aims of 20 minute neighborhoods this isn't just about the walking in a certain distance this is about the sort of community cohesion that we're seeking to achieve that living locally um and and creating better places for communities and that mix of housing type and size was felt crucial in order to get a mix of social people and um, a mix of ages and an ability to age in place. One of the, the aspects that came through from Melbourne as well was that ability to not have to move three miles in order to get a house that was suitable for you to live in as you were as you were aging and, and pro progressing through life. And also for that practical support. Yes, being neighbourly, basically, you know, the, the ability to go in and help an older neighbour and, and the fact that that happening can keep them in their homes longer, but also for that older neighbour to be there um, at times of need to look after and babysit and, and look after children coming home from school when um, we're all out at work or there's a mother working part time. The critical mass was important, as I've said, but very, very, uh, I was delighted that this came through was it required good design to ensure that that was happening. So that comes back to our placemaking that as planners, we're, we're very familiar with. If we don't design it well, then it doesn't mean that that social contact happens. It doesn't mean that people want to step out their door and walk if in order to do so. We've, we've designed it so poorly that, that they don't feel safe and it doesn't feel welcoming. So design continues to be very very important within that. And then finally, an important one, given the impact that COVID has had on our public transport, is that reducing the, the travel aspects of, of a 20, through a 20 minute neighbourhood benefits everybody, especially those on low income and those with other commitments. Now that means, and I'll come on to just a little bit of an image around that, is that what what we have right now is a national transport strategy that is quite clear that the private car is at the bottom now, walking and wheeling is at the top, public transport is in the middle. There's a crucial aspect of 20 minute neighbourhoods about getting people to walk out their door and irrespective if they're not the 30% of us who don't have a car anyway, that the other 60% are living in an area where they are encouraged to walk past that car and walk to whatever they need or to get on public transport, because that is what leads to the bus circle of growth or the bus circle of decline. Again, this is taken from the National Transport Strategy. Um, and the arrows there show, you know, if you increase patronage, then fares fall, costs fall, more people use the buses, there's less cars on the road, less congestion, buses get faster, they get more punctual, more people start to use them. That's that upward thing, but there really needs to be something in there about if we make it easier to get to your bus stop, if we always are thinking about this is walkable communities, but there are other things, other services that you don't get to on a daily basis that you need to get to by bus, then it's important that we think about how do we link everybody in to a bus service. Again, there's a critical mass there. If we're building at sufficient densities, then we get enough people that it is worth the while of bus companies to go into areas because they will actually get people, get a sufficient number of people using that bus service. And again, that bus circle of growth can, can happen. So, where are we now then? As I say, we have Scotland's fourth national planning um, position statement, um, supportive of where we are. Um, how do we move forward from there? For myself, um, moving on, we'll be looking at that same set of checklists at different scales. Obviously, working with the Edinburgh Local Development Plan, we were we were looking at a whole council area um, and how a, a 20 minute neighbourhood would assist for that. We want to also look down at a more local area and up more regionally. We're working at the moment with North Ayrshire Council on their our draws and development framework. An area not just that's, that's looking at um, a new campus and housing coming in on the edge of our Drossen, but is actually within a 10 minute walk of their town centre, a town centre that was struggling before COVID hit and, and is going to continue to do so as will our town centres across Scotland. So that is an interesting one because it's also looking at how 20 minute neighbourhoods start to, to be a, a focus for retrofitting 
all of our, our current centres across Scotland. We don't always have a greenfield site to go in and plan these, but we can begin with our town centres and certainly the Ardrossan change is quite substantial, but any change in a, in a, a town centre now should be thinking about how is it helping? Is it building that critical mass? Are we looking at housing? Are we getting people back in to um, our town centres in order to build a critical mass that can support more local economies? And then at a regional level, um, we'll be going on later on, I should think now in the new year, um, and specifically want to look at a more rural area because we need to get to the bottom of that Scottish context for how does this help a rural area and assess that as well. For 2021, um, my own work will start to look at how we prioritise areas of inequality with long term support around this. Um, Inequality exists in Scotland. There is little point with our limited resources, our limited capacity that we have to try and help everyone. We simply can't do it. But we have the stats that tell us what areas need help. We have the local outcome improvement plans in every area that tell us what our priorities are, what really needs attention. And we have the ability to be part of the answer in every one of those priorities um, in the local outcome improvement plans. So we can see where we would need to go in and, and start to make a difference and put our time, our very limited time and resource and, and to focus in on when we're looking at our, our local development plan policies as well. More information as I move forward on this is on the Planning for Place page on the Improvement Services website, as are the documents that I've, I've referred to throughout here as well. And thank you very much for listening. Um, please do get in touch if uh, if you would like any more information on anything or um, or if you've got any thoughts that you feel would help us along the way. Very welcome indeed. Thank you.